Hey guys, this is Brother Ray Jones with the First Church of God in Princeton, West Virginia. I want to welcome you to our midweek Bible study. I appreciate you joining in and uh, being a part of this time of learning and growing together tonight. I want to take care of a few announcements, some things we want you to be aware of. Uh, on any given Tuesday, there's a group of ladies and a group of men who meet uh, in person here at the church. The ladies meet at 10 a.m. for Bible study in the sanctuary, and the men get in our hospitality room or any other place that we need to to um, have uh, a prayer time or a prayer meeting. That is each Tuesday at 10 a.m., and if you are uh, in this area and you are up to an in-person gathering, you are welcome to be a part of those gatherings. We want you to be aware also we do have a blood drive coming up in just a couple of days. That is on September the 11th from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. We are partnering with the Red Cross to uh, have this blood drive, and we are looking forward to that. If you are an eligible blood donor, please go to uh, redcrossblood.org and find the drive for uh, the First Church of God in Princeton, West Virginia, and make an appointment to donate blood. We would appreciate your help with that. We want to give a shout out today uh, to some folks we know who are celebrating birthdays. Uh, today, Carolyn Harless uh, celebrates a birthday. I'm sure she is 29 and holding. Carolyn, uh, we are very happy for you. Happy birthday to you, and God bless you today. Also, Buddy Poff has a birthday today. Happy birthday to you, Buddy. Tomorrow, Drew Gibson will be celebrating another birthday. And this coming Saturday, our own Cody Coates will have a birthday. So happy birthday to you guys as well. We want to take some time to pray together tonight. And as we are praying, there are a few families that we want to be remembering in prayer who lost loved ones recently. We want to remember the family of Miss Betty Hill. Uh, this is Bonnie and Athena's sister who passed away. Uh, that family very much needs our prayers. We have been praying for a couple of people who are battling COVID. Two of those were Pat Belton and Karen Alvis. And I'm sorry to have to say that both of those ladies passed away due to COVID. And we want to remember their families as we are praying tonight. Let's continue to pray for Ms. Mitzi Klein with some health issues. Linda Cunningham uh, needs our prayers tonight. Let's continue to remember Bill Harless as he has recurring cancer and will resume chemotherapy. We want to remember Luke Dunn. He's 14 years old. He's battling stage four cancer. And we have gotten word that he is improving greatly. We are so thankful for that. and want to continue to pray for Luke. We want to remember Rhonda Barber as she has her ongoing battle uh, with cancer and, and taking some more chemotherapy having some tough days here recently with that, and we want to pray for her. Deborah Hawks is still recovering from back surgery, and she's doing very, very well. She was actually able to be in service with us recently, and we're grateful for that. We want to be much in prayer for uh, schools that are resuming. In West Virginia, in most counties, many counties anyway, they were able to resume school with students on campus. In some counties, they were only able to do virtual learning and this is just a very high stress time for school staff, for students, for parents, for everybody. Let's be in much prayer as schools resume here in our neck of the woods. Let's again be faithful to pray for our government leaders. Um, the Bible encourages us, he actually instructs us to pray for those who rule over us, those who uh, are in authority. And uh, we want to honor that, and we want to be praying for our government leaders at every level. Maybe you have a prayer request that uh, you would like to message into us. Please feel free to do so, either through private message or in the comments. We very much want to be praying with you and for you about those things that are heavy on your heart. Well, let's take some time and pray together this evening. Lord Jesus, thank you for the privilege of being able to gather in your presence. Lord, thank you that we get the opportunity to study your word together tonight. Lord, um, as we approach that time, we want to be mindful to pray for the needs that we are aware of. Lord, um, our hearts are heavy for these families that have lost loved ones recently. We ask, Father, that you would be with uh, the family of Miss Betty Hill. 
We know, Father, that uh, they lost Miss Bonnie not long ago, and uh, this is just a big time of loss for the entire family. We pray you comfort them like only you can. Lord, we pray for Pat Belton's family and for Karen Alvis's family. Father, we ask that you would have mercy on them and be very close to them, Lord, as these families mourn uh, these untimely losses. We pray, Father, for Mitzi Klein. You understand her health needs today, and we just lift her before you and pray for her healing. We pray, Father, that you would be with Linda Cunningham and that, Lord, you would bring healing there. Lord, we lift Bill Harless before you. We pray that you would touch him and have mercy on him and be with him as he faces chemo. We pray, Lord, for your healing touch upon his body. We thank you, Lord, for the good word about Luke Dunn. We pray you continue to touch and bless him. And, Lord, bring him on the other side of cancer. Lord, we pray that you'd give him full healing and recovery. We lift Rhonda Barber before you and pray, Father, that you would continue to comfort and keep her close to you, that you would bring healing to her as she continues with chemotherapy treatments. Lord, we thank you that Deborah is doing so much better and recovering from her back surgery. Please continue to have your hand upon her, Lord, uh, for their grandbaby, uh, granddaughter, baby Josie. We pray for continued healing there. Lord, we pray that you would be with um, the school systems in our area and even, Lord, throughout this land as uh, school has resumed in some places already and uh, just began recently, Lord, here in West Virginia. We pray, Father, that your grace would abound. We pray for your covering over everyone uh, who's getting together in person. We pray, Father, that there would be no sickness spread at all. And, Lord, um, as so many changes have to be made, on almost a moment's notice, Lord, we pray that your grace would abound and that you would help everyone who's affected by this to be gracious and understanding through this process. Lord, we ask that you would help uh, the students, the staff, the parents, everyone involved at every level in education. Lord, give them an extra measure of grace, we pray. Lord, we do pray for our nation. Lord, for our leaders at every level, we pray that you would guide and direct their steps. We pray they would seek your face. And then, Lord, when you speak and share and direct them, Lord, we pray they would follow that direction for your honor and glory. We pray for your blessing upon this land, Lord. Now, Father, there are other needs that are represented uh, in this place, others that are being messaged in. Lord, you knew these needs before we even asked. And, Father, for each of those needs, spoken and unspoken, Lord, we lift them before you and we entrust them to your care. Lord, we pray in Jesus' name that your perfect will and way would be done in each one. Now, Lord, bless as we look into your word tonight. Guide us and teach us, we pray in your name. Amen and amen. Thank you for agreeing in prayer this evening. Uh, we're going to begin a study in the New Testament book of Colossians. So if you have your Bible, I want to encourage you to get your Bible out. And look with me tonight in Colossians, the first chapter. We're going to be going through the first 12 verses of Colossians chapter 1. Now, just very quickly, let me give you a brief overview. The book of Colossians was written by the Apostle Paul in and around the years 60 to 62 A.D. Uh, and he was in prison when he wrote to the believers at Coloss. Uh, now, when he wrote this letter... The purpose behind it is to deal with a heresy that was threatening the church at the time. That heresy was known as Gnosticism or the Gnostic heresy. And basically, um, Gnosticism, as it is referred to, is a belief system claiming that salvation could be gained through some special form of, of knowledge or secret knowledge in particular. It was very high on the head side of religion, but it, it did not hit the heart side of religion. And it, it made salvation very exclusive to an exclusive few, contrary to what Jesus said, that salvation is simply through believing on him. Um, now, Gnosticism has reared its ugly head in various forms or fashion, um, down through the years. But it was very much an issue when Paul was writing to the Colossians. And as we get further into this book, Paul is going to be making the case for salvation being in Christ 
in Christ alone. Now, while Gnosticism in and of itself may not be the heresy of modern day times, there are a bunch of threats upon Christianity to get us to believe that there's salvation through any other means than Jesus Christ or through other means including Jesus Christ. So as we go through this study, it's going to be important for us to take note of what Paul is saying to the Colossians and how we can apply that in this day and age. Now that being said, tonight's study is going to cover the first 12 verses of Colossians chapter 1. And in this introductory part, we're getting a, a little idea of who the Colossians are and who Paul is. And, and Paul, as he writes to the various churches, including the church at Colossae, he, uh, he reveals some things about himself and about them. And uh, let's get into this tonight and, and see, as we get into this, we're going to see that the Colossians had a lot of things going for them. And yet there were some things that they still desperately needed. And Paul addresses those things in this opening. So follow along as we begin in um, Colossians chapter 1, beginning at verse 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, to the saints and faithful brethren in Christ who are at Coloss, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We give thanks to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you, since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of your love for all the saints, because of the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, of which you heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel, which has come to you as it has also to the, all of the world and is bringing forth fruit as it is also among you since the day you heard and knew the grace of God in truth. As you also learn from Epaphras, our dear, dear fellow servant, who is a faithful minister of Christ on your behalf, who also declared to us your love in the Spirit. For this reason, we also, since the day we heard it, we do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power, for all patience and long suffering with joy, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. All right, now again, this is the introduction to uh, the introductory part that Paul writes to the Colossians. And we see as we read Paul's words that the Colossians had a lot of things going for them. A lot of things were in their favor. One of those things they had going for them is they had a lot of people praying for them. If you go back in verse 3, you'll find out Paul and other believers uh, were praying for the believers at Coloss. My friends... Um, one of the most gracious gifts that you can give someone else is to genuinely pray for them. When we pray, when we talk to God on behalf of someone else, we are talking to the highest authority ever, the most important person in the world, God Almighty himself. And when we're praying to him for other people, uh, it is one of the greatest gifts you can ever give someone because you're speaking to the Almighty on behalf of someone else. Um, now, I got to be honest with you. Uh, I, I do my very best to pray for other people. And I've learned down through the years, being a pastor, I, I have a lot of people ask me to pray for them. And I've been guilty before of forgetting to do so. So a lot of times when to offset that or to try to remedy that, rather, I have found out if you ask me to pray for you, I may pray with you right there on the spot, or if we don't pray together for whatever reason, I'm going to be sure that I take a moment and get somewhere where I can just pray right then because I don't want to forget to pray for you. I know exactly how important prayer is, and I know that it is one of the most precious gifts that you can give 
anyone is to be genuinely praying for them. Um, I would encourage you to give that gift to others on a regular basis. Take time and pray for them. The Colossians had Paul and Timothy and others in that area praying for them. Another thing they had going for them, according to these opening remarks by Paul, is they had a genuine faith in Christ. They had put their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. They had received the Lord by faith. They had believed on him and had their sins forgiven. And they were on that journey of following him. Uh, their faith was solidly rooted in the Lord Jesus Christ. Another thing that Paul commends them for is they loved the saints. Um, my brothers and sisters, I want you to understand one of the most important things we can do in our expression of the Christian faith is to love one another. 1 John chapter 5, verse 14 says these words. We know that we have passed from death to life because we love the brethren. He who does not love the brethren, uh, he who does, does not love his brother, do, abides in death. Uh, we know we've passed from death to life because we love our brothers and sisters in the Lord. These believers at Colossus had a true love not only for the Lord, but also for the saints of God. Paul acknowledges another thing going in their favor is they knew that they, their eternal home was in heaven. Because they had put their faith in Jesus Christ, they knew that one day when they passed from this life to the next, they were going to someplace far better. My friends, I am so glad and take great comfort in the words of Jesus Christ where he told the disciples, I go to prepare a place for you. Uh, and if it were not so, I would have told you. And if I'm going to prepare that place for you, I will come back and will, will, will receive you to that place for myself. I am glad that I've got a home in glory land. And that old song goes on to say, it outshines the sun. Now, don't misunderstand me as I say these words. I am grateful for where I live. I'm grateful for the beautiful weather we've been blessed with recently. I am grateful for all the wonderful blessings that God is extending my way. But as good as days can be in this world, our best days in this world pale in comparison to what heaven's going to be like. So while I'm grateful for every good and great blessing God is sending my way in the here and now, I know there's even greater things in store when we get to heaven. Uh, the Colossians knew their eternal home was heaven. And for all who believe, that is our hope as well. Another thing they had going for them, according to the Apostle Paul, they were bearing spiritual fruit. Uh, these believers had not only put their faith in Christ, but they evidently were growing in that faith. And you could tell that they were Christians and that they were spiritual people because the fruit of the Spirit was coming out in their lives. Uh, don't just gloss over that. After we put our faith in Christ, he wants us to grow in him and to bear spiritual fruit. John 15, 5 says this, I'm the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. So evidently, the Colossians, again, had not only put their faith in Christ, but they were continuing in that faith. They were staying connected to Christ in faith. And the evidence of that was not a particular gift or preaching flowery sermons or anything like that, but the spiritual fruit was being born in their lives. In John 15, 8, Jesus goes on to say this, By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit. So will you be my disciples. Once we put our faith in Christ, we're not supposed to just sit around and wait on 
glory to get here or for us to be taken to glory. We're to do our service for his honor and glory. And we're to bear fruit not only in our lives, but part of that fruit that we're to bear is to help see other people um, come to know Jesus Christ as Savior. Now, we can't save anybody and we can't make anybody get saved. But one of the things we are, two things we can do is we can live our lives in such a way that they want to know about the Jesus we serve. And we can then tell them about him when the time is right. So they were bearing spiritual fruit. Another thing that they had going for them, according to these opening remarks by Paul, they had a great pastor. This guy Epaphras that is mentioned in these verses. He was their pastor, their minister. And Epaphras had a heart to serve people. He loved his congregation at Colossus. And he, um, he not only preached the word of God to them and taught them, but he, he had a shepherd's heart and he cared for them. My friends, I have been the beneficiary of people who are God-called pastors who have a heart for God and a heart for people. And they not only boldly proclaimed the word of God on Sunday, they lived it out, and then they were there for you to help you along the way to impart spiritual wisdom and counsel and those kind of things. Um, when you have a God-called pastor with a, that has a genuine pastor's heart, that is a real blessing. I can testify to that. I've experienced that along the way in my life. One other thing they had going for them. These believers had genuine love. Paul makes note of that, about the love they had for one another, but just this true agape love, uh, one of the fruit of the Spirit, perhaps the most important, but uh, definitely the one that's listed first. They had genuine love. Uh, guys, everyone we come into contact with is looking for true love. Now, there are a whole lot of ideas out there about what that really looks like. There are a lot of misconceptions about what that really is. God has the corner on this market. He is love. And when we put our faith in Him and His Spirit dwells within us, one of the things that needs to be coming from that experience is we need to, to have love produced in our lives. Now, in order for that really to happen, we need to know how much the Father just simply loves us. I believe with all my heart that there's a certain capacity that anyone has to love. But I believe there's a greater capacity to, to love exponentially when we've received that love ourselves. In an ideal situation, you experience that first in family life from your parents. Uh, you come into this world and you are loved by your parents and you get to express that love back to your parents. Um, and if that has not been your reality, I'm truly, truly sorry. I am so grateful for the love that I experienced from a, a, a wonderful mother and father throughout my life. Uh, but here's what I want you to know. That part of love is one thing. And as great as that is, if you want to really um, know what love is all about, you've got to open yourself up to the love of God. If we could comprehend how much God really loves us and then open our hearts up to that love, we would then be able to love others phenomenally better than we ever thought we could. Uh, they, these believers had genuine love for the Lord. They had received love from Him, and then they were expressing that love to other people. Uh, my friends, if you don't get anything else out of this tonight, I hope you will know God really does love you. He loves you so much that he gave his only son to die for your sins. Um, he loves you so much he, he gave his only begotten to pay the price that none of us could pay. He made that sacrifice. 
not uh, for, for any other reason beyond his great love for us. And I pray that you and I both will know that love in the, to its fullest extent so that we can share it with other people. The Colossians had that in great measure, and we can have that as well. Well, there, those are seven things that the Colossians had going for them that we know according to these opening verses. But there were some other things according to these uh, opening words from Paul that they, needed to, they still needed in their lives. Let's take a look at a few of those very quickly. One of the things that they needed is they needed to know God's will daily. That was one of the prayers that Paul had for the believers at Colossus, that they would know God's will every day. Uh, the will of God, what God wants us to do in and through us, is something that we need to be aware of. We need to find that will and then walk in that will. Ephesians 5 verses 15 and 16 gives us some instruction on how to do this. It says these words, See then that you walk circumspectly or carefully, not as fools but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Therefore do not be unwise but understand what the will of the Lord is. Now Paul wrote those words to the Ephesians. Then he wrote these words to the Romans in Romans chapter 12 verse 2. He said, don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may be able to prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So how do we find God's will in order to be able to, to know it? How do we find it? Well, we walk close with the Lord. We walk circumspectly or carefully, as Paul wrote to the Ephesians. We shun foolishness and we seek God's wisdom um, and in seeking the Lord he will reveal to us what his will is now he further explains a lot of how we're to do this in Romans 12 2 where he says not to be conformed to this world but instead to be transformed by the renewing of our minds when we came to Christ we've been spending a lot of time thinking things a certain way well one of the things the Lord wants to do in us is renew our way of thinking. The more we get into the Word uh, and, and, and the more that we, we let the Spirit of God guide us as we read the Word, He will transform not only our hearts but also our minds and reveal to us what His will is. So the Colossians needed to know God's will. They also needed to walk faithfully with the Lord. Um, it is one thing to make a decision for Christ at some point in time and say, uh, Lord, I'm sorry I've sinned and come into my life. That is an important, vital step of faith to take. That is where you enter into a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. But there, there's more to it than just entering that relationship. We also need to walk faithfully with Christ. We need to get up each day. We ought to get saved all over again. But we need to get up each, each day after we put our faith in Christ and we need to walk by faith day by day and moment by moment, walking with the Lord and faithfully living out the things that he's shown us to do. Each day is a new chapter in the book of life and we've got to walk daily with the Lord so that we can fill those pages with good things. Another thing that uh, the Colossians needed they needed strength to endure, endure the trials that would come their way. Uh, as Paul wrote these opening remarks, he noted that no matter how good the Colossians had it, they were going to face trials. And when those trials came, they would need patient endurance to make it through. My friends, I don't know about you, but if 2020 hadn't taught us anything, it's teaching us patience. And I will be the first to admit, I don't like being taught patience. But somehow God didn't um, ask me whether I wanted to learn it or not. He just said, hey, you've got to exercise patience. And trials are going to come your way. And I'm going to give you the strength to endure. My friends, 
I, I, it's not pleasant. It's not fun. But I will tell you, God does give us the grace and the strength we need to endure any trial that he allows to come our way. The Colossians needed that. We need it as well. The last thing that we want to highlight that the Colossians needed is they needed to maintain a grateful attitude. Paul noted that as he closed out verse 12 about how uh, just to be grateful to the Lord. Uh, Paul wrote to the Thessalonians these words in 1 Thessalonians 5.18. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. My friends, let us know carefully what Paul said there. He did not say be thankful for all things, but he said to be grateful in all things. Regardless of our circumstances, we can be grateful. We can have an attitude of gratitude. My friends, it's important to maintain that attitude when tough times come. I can promise you this. I've walked through times in my life where I was extremely ungrateful. And I, I've reflected on those times and I figured out one of the ways to get out of that um, depression or that doldrum, if you will, is to not focus on what you don't have, but to start being thankful for what you do have. And when I've sought to apply that in my life, I have found God uh, leads me through and gets me on the other side. And the journey is a lot easier. It's not easy necessarily, but it is, it is easier because I'm learning to maintain a grateful attitude. Um, so there are seven things that um, the Colossians had going for them and four things that they still needed to kind of work on, if you will. And um, I hope as you look at these things that you can take stock of things you've got going for you and then consider these four things particularly that Paul mentioned the Colossians needed to work on. If there's any of those things you need to work on as well, then may God give you the grace to do that. Now, we're going to continue studying the book of Colossians uh, and picking it up where we've left off here in uh, the weeks that are to follow. And we'll get into some other things again that Paul uh, had to say at that time. But for tonight, that is what we wanted to cover. I thank you for tuning in. I hope that you've received a blessing from this. And uh, if this has blessed you, please feel free to share this with other folks. I uh, want you to be mindful of one other thing by way of announcement. I forgot to mention it earlier. On Sunday, September the 20th, uh, here in person at the First Church of God on Mahood Avenue, we're going to be having the singing group Chosen Road uh, performing a worship concert. We would love for you to be a part of that in person. If you cannot uh, be in person, we encourage you to tune in and watch online. We will be streaming that service. We are looking forward to that. Thank you again so much for your time this evening. I hope you've received a blessing. May God bless you and have a good night.